Yo and hello everybody. Welcome to another special episode of On the Fly with Mike. I'm Mike and Ty and that's Ty. Hey. And, uh, what's up, man? What what's we, up? What are we doing today on this special episode? Well, we've been talking about doing this for a while. We thought it'd be good to go through and, and just respond to some top comments. There's so many comments that you guys have left over the past and we're only doing the last uh, six days, seven weeks. So 10 or so videos. Yeah. Taking some comments, wanted to respond and have a good old time. Yeah, this will be fun. We you do don't even appreciate... know some of the comments. What's that? You don't even know some of the comments I'm going to throw up here. I it's know. Be good. I'm excited. We do appreciate everybody that comments. All the, I mean, we do. It's we we read them all. We don't always respond, and you, you can probably tell by that when you get a response that it's either me or t depending on the tone of the response. But uh, we we definitely read them all. And we appreciate it for sure. We do. No, and, and some of you guys put like a lot of thought into your responses and it's fun. And uh, Mike and I and the whole Bench Clear crew will sometimes text each other just about what people are saying. So we, we really do appreciate it. So thank you for that. A um, couple things real quick. So since the January 1st, our most liked video was the Great Hobby Reset, which did obviously stirred up a lot of people's emotions and then uh don't grade cards until you see this uh, some data that i broke down an elite code three interview number three opening 350 blasters you see a trend here these are all my videos uh our sports card destroying your life that one really stirred some emotions here i'll just i'll do what i need <laughs> all right this is gonna be good <laughs> see i'll just go over to this side uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go to but, the co-pilot oh, chair, the co-pilot chair over here. A lot of comments on the great hobby reset. Um, should eBay stay in their own lane? And then some of our recent videos. So we're going we're gonna to pull up some of those and, and see what you guys are saying. So let's go through it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So let's start with this one here from nefty ballers are their villains in the hobby video. We did it last week. I uh, think you guys are way off of soccer. Love the products. Lots of numbered and autos. Soccer fan base is 3.5 billion. Ba baseball's 500 million. Basketball's 400. Football's 400 million. If Panini tops or fanatics invest in educating the fans, it could easily be their best revenue stream. What say you, Mike? Do you have a sensor button? Because I'm about to need some bleeping. <laughs> because I, I think he's just wrong. It's okay to disagree, by the way. There's a lot of people that we got comments on that video oh, tons about amazing no we agree Locker. and the reality is fan base does not equal hobby relevancy period paragraph they're two very different things agree uh, completely agree yeah yeah uh it's why wwe cards don't explode in value you could argue they have more fans than any any sport, right? No, not yeah. sport. It, it's and it's been this way for decades. Soccer has been the world's most popular sport for a long, long, long time, and yeah. does not equal does not equal hobby success, hobby relevancy at all. It doesn't mean soccer cards can't be popular. It just means they will never be ever. Write this down. Ever, market, ever greater than baseball. Probably basketball, probably football. They'll always be no higher than number four in terms of sales. If you just look at sales, that's just if you, that, that's the way to measure success, right? In the sports card, are they selling cards or not? Not necessarily secondary market. We had a Pele card that sold for a million dollars, which is actually what prompted that discussion. Yep. Uh, it doesn't mean the occasional soccer card won't be valuable. It'll never be as popular in the sports card hobby as those three sports mark it down. Yep. We agree. But thank you, Nefty Ballers. Uh, okay. This one's in uh, the e economics of the 350 blasters video I did where I talked about opening all those blasters and the economics of making it work. work. This was a great comment by the Four Horsemen. Really appreciate it. Been in the hobby for 45 years. The most helpful detail video I've ever watched. And we started doing this years ago. So uh, best compliment I can give you is you get it. And you're in it for the right reasons. Would you agree that I'm in it for the right reasons, Mike? I think you only pulled that comment because he was being nice to you. <laughs> I mean, come on. 
Hey, I gotta I gotta pat the back of people that compliment us in that type of depth. Actually, that yes, I I know you're in it for the right reasons. And <laughs> and you do make a supplemental income on the hobby. Yeah. And I do not. And that's we're just very different in that way. And there's nothing wrong with either way. Yep. Uh, and, and but I do think you do it for the right reasons. I do think you are a collector at your core and you love cool stuff just like I do. Heck yeah. Great comment. Thank you so much for that. All right, Steve, is the sports card market shrinking? It is not shrinking. It's getting back to where it was pre-pandemic. I wish it would have happened quicker, to be honest. The faster the flippers and investors leave, the sooner we can get our hobby back. Please go back to shoe flipping and selling used cars. Leave us alone. I think Steve might be my doppelganger there. No, um, <laughs> we need... I, the hobby stair steps, right? I Everybody thinks it's a smooth curve up and down, and I don't think it's that. I think it, there's these stair steps of popularity in the hobby. I think we have taken three steps forward, and the hobby might take one step back. I don't think we'll ever get back to pre-pandemic levels. Those are long gone. Um, maybe we'll get back to pre-pandemic levels of printing cards, <laughs> but not necessarily in terms of values. I mean, I see vintage stuff I'm, you know, on the hunt for when I go look, it's nowhere close to what I used to pay for stuff, even just two years ago, two and a half years ago. So to think we're going back there, I think is probably a little bit naive. Um, I've just been doing this too. I know better. Three steps forward, one step back. And we're in the one step back and that's okay. I would disagree what you, with you. There. What say you, Ty? I would disagree with that completely. Okay. I, first off, I think we're much closer to where we were pre pre pandemic levels than maybe you think. I mean, we're within ten to twenty percent on just about everything except the super high end. And yeah, hunting gear is going up, seeds are going up, livestock's going up, cars are going up. But you know what those things have in common? You need those things to live. They have utility in your life. Yeah. Cards don't. So I think very quickly, if inflation rises and discretionary income and the ability for people to go spend on these types of things decreases, cards can very easily get back to pre-pandemic levels. I do admit to being having having a relatively narrow viewpoint on this because I don't look at the whole card market, quite frankly. Um, but the vintage baseball market, it's still it's cheaper than it was, but it's not as cheap as it was and not really close, honestly. Um, so, I mean, I think if it's within 20% of where it was, that's still expensive. <laughs> like it's not, um, so again, admittedly, I don't have like this huge spectrum of card price knowledge in terms of different sports and all the new modern stuff, but the vintage stuff is, is still performing very well, still higher than it was by a lot. I wouldn't say a lot. Some. You even did your portfolio video a few weeks back, and it was almost back to reality outside of a few cards. Mm, some. Oh I'll let you know when I start buying cards again if I get depressed. Well, there you go. That, that'll tell us everything. Right. Uh, yeah. But we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that one. But, yeah, we are looking at it from two different perspectives for sure. True. All right. Denning Family. Are sports cards ruining your life? This this whole video brought out some very uh, heartfelt, stirring, heartfelt yes, comments. yes. Um, Michael, let you read this one. This is a good comment. Cards are fun. Cards connect me to the game, to childhood memories. Cards keep me or help me connect with other people. Have helped me make good friends. Help me make my kids or get my kids jobs and companies run by people I've met in the hobby. So it's been good. But I've also let it become an addiction and obsession. They've crushed me financially and have hurt my marriage at times. All is in fact, all is intact. God, I have to read it harder. Hold on. I'm blind and old. All is intact. <laughs> uh, but it has not been easy and I doubt it can be what it could have been. Same for my retirement. I have giant sell-offs with a lot of success, but then I get sucked back in. It's tough. Wow. I love the honesty. It's incredibly honest. 
And I feel like that was a pretty common um, kind of perspective from people. There's a lot of good things generally around the community of cards. And then there was a lot of bad things generally around the financial kind of addiction aspect of cards that people got sucked into. Well, one, one of the comments, I don't know if you're going to show it because I don't know all the 10 that we're going to do today, but uh, one gentleman said, it's always great to, he appreciated the comment that you made during the video about, is this bringing joy to my life? Is this adding to my life? If it's, yeah. we need to ask ourselves that question, some people more often than others, but it needs to be something we revisit regularly to make sure that it's positive in our life and not a negative. And be yeah. honest with yourself about that because that's hard to do. Yeah, Sometimes. very, very much so. And I and I think it's important to note that 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 common theme continues to come up, and it's a reminder that you generally don't get a lot of satisfaction out of going down that path of just spending more money. You get more satisfaction when you double down on like the community and using cards and building those relationships. Yeah, that's the true value of life, isn't it? I mean relationships and those are the things that matter long term right cardboard's very temporary relationships can matter forever beautiful literally, literally. we're not going to read this whole comment this is in regards to your video which is your your latest one um which was great the golden age of cardboard mike answers hobby questions mike is so funny in the 90s i owned a sports card store and it was not only a great success but a great burden um, spent the nineties traveling to shows, buying collections from store to store. Uh, he's, it's spot on with the Greg Morris stuff. I always enjoy watching and knowing that there's still some true hobbyists left in this crazy era of sports cards. Uh, Refractor Jones, you're always coming on our videos. We really appreciate it. Just comments like this are really fun to read because you, you get to hear people's stories and how they connect with the way we kind of view the hobby. It's pretty fun. Yeah. And that's a comment in response to a question I answered on that video on that golden age of cardboard episode about would I be in the hobby full time? And, and I, and I got to the, jump to the conclusion or went to the conclusion of, I would start hating. I don't, I don't want to ever be where I hate cards and it's a, and it's just this grind. And so to me, I, I just know myself and know that I would not, that wouldn't be a good fit for me. And I have tremendous respect for people that do do the hobby full time. Yeah. And, make a living out of it and good for them. It would just be very difficult for me. Yeah. You know, the, the flip side of that argument that I, that I've heard a couple of times, I think is really true as well, is that s some really popular resellers um, will say that focus on selling things that you love because the second you stop and sell other things, you'll start to look at it like a job. And so there's, there's a counter argument to that. And if you, you if you go full time, and you're doing it because you love sports cards, you probably will do pretty well. You do better than you would if you started to sell like women's clothing or something and you had no desire to do it, right? I love women's clothing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Darn it, when it's, when it's on the floor, right? What? Like when Julie takes her... Never no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm married. It's okay. I'm married. Uh, anyway, Oz Sports Card Collector, who... Again, we mentioned this in our last episode. Thank you so much, man, for all your great comments. Um, I pretty much live on Com C, and some funds are starting to trickle in from recent consignments. I'm about to purchase my first slab benches card. Congrats. Yay, go Oz. I'm really enjoying scrolling through all the years from 51 to 80, learning about all the different cards. That's where the fun lies. Totally agree with that. Um, I've never spent more than $200 on any one card, and I doubt that will change unless I become an investor. Thanks so much for the con comment or content. Interesting. Yeah. I would have guessed he, he would have spent more, more on cards. He has some pretty good yeah. understanding of the sports card market. What I love is a, that Oz is getting into vintage. It's about bloody time. B bloody. He, uh, it, it shows there. I think there, the demographics of the sports card market is there are probably like the demographics of our country so many more people that live in the they love thumbing through the 50 cent and dollar boxes it shows and they love yeah. they love that and that's fantastic like i just think there's a lot more people like that 
and what's funny is you see the showcases it shows and it's all these, you know, comma cards plus, you know, that yeah. not very few people in that room are looking for that or want that. There's way more people wanting the, I'll call it cheaper stuff. Although it's just as valuable to that collector that loves that card or that player or that team that he's finding. And they love hunting for gems in the, in the rough, you know, in the, in the boxes, they love thumbing through it and finding a $20 card that they buy for a dollar you know, mm. and good for th That's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm with you. Thank you, Oz, for that comment. Uh, I'm going to show you this real quick. We're going to talk about this next week on the show, but it's starting to happen. Cards are being returned from eBay. They're not authentic, even though they are authentic. I'm waiting with bated breath to talk to you about this next week. Yeah. And I'm starting to get texts from friends in the hobby that are dealing with eBay and that this whole, you know, $500. Now it's $500 is the new threshold tie. I didn't know. They've already reduced it and they're going to go. I, do you think ultimately they go to where every card has to go through this eBay pre whatever process? If they do, I, I'm going to, I'm going to start questioning if they're government run. <laughs> right. The bureaucracy <laughs> only gets the red tape only gets thicker. Yes, but we will talk about that next week because, uh, yeah, we are getting hit up with people already dealing with the authentication rules and it's costing them money. It's costing people real money already. Yeah, and it just started. Just started. All right, number six, uh, we just did that, so we're not going to show that one. Uh, seven, Daniel Allen, are there villains in the hobby? I don't think people forgot about Stafford. He's just not easy to come by as, as Burrow because he's a more recent rookie. Here's some lot. Uh, from from you guys and how people are getting or, or forgetting about vintage and don't really think I don't think that's the case at all. Recent rookies are easier to attain. You can still buy packs and get Herbert and Burrow rookies as far as Stafford. You have to go on eBay and even though you could probably get a good deal, his cards are older and probably don't grade as well. Just get tired of hearing this over and over. Otherwise, great show. What's he tired of hearing? <laughs> He's tired of hearing that we think that Stafford should have potentially been going up in value. Uh, but in all reality, Burrow's going up in value because he's more recent and he's in packs and people get excited about that. And uh, my point, I actually responded to this one here. You're arguing based on volume of sales. I'm arguing based on the movement and price, completely different point of views. With that said, your logic that Stafford rookies should be shooting through the roof because there's an increase in demand and, and, and lower supply. That's not happening. Um, summarizing that, I think people try to justify things however they want. If if Stafford wins the Super Bowl, or he won a Super Bowl, and he has fewer cards in the market, and if people were interested in Stafford, the true logic would be that they would go buy his cards and the prices would go up. They would squeeze higher. But they don't. Because maybe he's right. You can go by Burrow. It's recency bias. You see him, you think, oh, he's the next greatest thing. And younger. Younger. Right. And look, all that may be true, but everyone's flocking here. I'm saying there's an opportunity here from a guy who just proved that he can do it. And yeah, there's fewer available. So go buy them. And <laughs> so, right. Yeah. yeah. I, Supply and demand at its greatest, right? Supply and demand. Yes, exactly. Uh, but thank you for your comment. All right. Wade Boggs fan. Are sports car ruining your life? Another one. Another one. When I was having problems with my first marriage, not because of my hobby, I used, I used buying baseball cards as an escape. And it quickly led to a lot of credit card debt. At, after I got divorced, I made a point to cut down on my card purchases and dug myself out from credit card debt. Now I am very strict with my card budget. I make sure I have money to pay the bills and set money aside before I figure out how much money I can spend on every paycheck. And there's more to that one as well. Um. <laughs> learned. I mean, sometimes you got to learn lessons the hard way. I think about my life and some of the best lessons I learned is from making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to really internalize something unless you feel it and it hurts you're like, I, I don't touch that hot stove. Well, that just makes me want to touch the hot stove. And once I do and burn myself, I go, I don't want to do that again. That's kind of the reality in the sports card world for a lot of people is they get deep 
into it and end up in trouble. John did the right thing. Who's Wade Boggs fan who made that comment and got himself out of it and recognized it and said, okay, can't let this happen again. And he's being more disciplined and smart. I just, I think good on you, John. The best of the best in this hobby learn from their mistakes. They adjust, they buy smarter the next time. And you're going to make them like just, yeah, I've made plenty, plenty over the years. Uh, nobody's perfect and you won't be either in the hobby and that's okay. Just, Pick yourself up and lick your wounds and move on. And watch another episode of On the Fly with Mike and Ty. Yeah, we'll help you avoid mis- Now, you, Sometimes you got to make the mistake. That's what sucks. It really does, but that's yeah. true. Greg W., don't grade until you see this. This is where we I broke down the data on the grading card industry. Great episode. Well, well, thank you. One thing that has to be considered is that there has been a massive purge of the best cards from the eBay platform gradually over the past year eBay just doesn't accommodate the high-end seller anymore, which means a decline on price point for PSA and BGS specifically. None of the other graders are really affected by this high-end exodus from eBay over the last year. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's true? Um, I do not think it's true. I don't. There's either. always been there's always been those auction houses. Yeah, it's not like it just popped up this year. Right. Uh, Some have slipped over to my slabs. I get that. Um. But, but those platforms are a fraction of the 1%, you know, I mean, they're just, it doesn't matter yet. They don't matter yet. I'm not saying they won't. I would love to see another platform be better than eBay. And I'm not, but eBay just is where it is. It, it's the most viewed. If you want to get the most eyeballs on a card, you're going to put it on eBay. Yep. This is the reality. What do you yeah. think about it? No, and, and and consignment shops still will sell through eBay. It's not like if you send it off the Heritage, all of a sudden it's gone, or PWCC, it's gone. No, like they, a lot of time they actually just sell on eBay. So those cards aren't just slipping off into the ether. Like they're well, Probstein's one of the biggest ones. In here. Right, right, Probstein, right, exactly. Everything through eBay. Uh, yeah, yeah. eBay's not going anywhere. They're going to have plenty of high end sales. You do see the super high end stuff mostly go to auction houses and that's just because you get a better deal. Always has. Right. And that I mean, always 10 years plus. Yeah. It's yeah. not new. Not new. Uh, last comment here. We'll talk about today. Buying cards in a down market. Six tips you and I gave a few weeks back. Good video. I think a lot of Mike Trout non rookie cards are being overlooked. Refractors, inserts, etc. People are going to look back when Trout hopefully makes the Hall of Fame and realize they should have picked a lot of those up when they were dirt cheap. I don't know about dirt cheap, but they're cheaper. I like that the hobby hit dip. Too many flippers ruin retail and collecting aside. Sometimes hobby just needs a good rinse. <laughs> a good rinse, huh? Yep. I always I use the term flush the toilet, you know, and get rid of all the crap. And then you can start over. Uh, let me comment on Trout. <laughs> Trout's an interesting case because he's easily the best player of this generation. Like it's not even yeah, close. It's not even close. Um, I would consider Soto, Acuna. Those those guys are in the next generation, right? Who will be the greatest out of that generation? I would put my money on Soto, but we'll find out in a decade. You know, until then, Trout's the best player on the planet, and he's been injured the last couple of years, so he's got a lot to prove. Trout could retire, say, I'm not playing any more baseball. He's going to get in the Hall of Fame. There's zero question about that. Um, he, again, he's done enough already to get in. It's what does he do from here to establish a hobby legacy that would probably be Mantle-esque, you know? He really could get there if he has four or five more seasons like he had pre-2019, or you know? Yep. Um if he wins another MVP, for example, he doesn't have to win multiple, but comes back to MVP caliber. Uh, I think he could be one of the hobby greats of all time. So, yeah, now's a great time to be picking up trout stuff because baseball's on, you know, whatever they're, you know, lockout and hiatus and all that. So, baseball stuff is really, especially modern stuff, is just not getting the attention that it normally does this time of year with spring training starting. Uh, Trout has a lot of unknowns and question marks behind him. Uh, so if you can pick Trout stuff up, 
Not a bad idea. This this could potentially be the easiest 30 to 50% people ever make in the sports car world. If, if trout comes back at the beginning of the season and plays remotely close to what we're used to seeing from him, they're just going to shoot right back up so quickly. Yeah. I mean, his rookie card, which is the only card I have of his, that's really of significant value has plummeted from seven grand to now it's back to like 2,500 bucks Yeah, for a PSA 10. Uh, so if you, if you were going to, if you're waiting to buy one, I, I don't know what you're waiting for now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not like you just said this, the floor is not much lower. The floor is just not much lower. The, the risk to reward right now is. Yeah. Could it go to two grand maybe, but that's not a huge drop from here. Yep. You know, um, and there, and most of them have been great. I mean, there are still trout rookies being graded, but not at the pace. Right. Uh, there's just not that the ones that are gradable have been graded for the most part. Right. right. Exactly. You'll see, you'll see the pop counts continue to rise slowly, but not, not dramatically by any stretch. Yeah. No, that's a great comment. Great point. Thanks for bringing that up. Well, cool. There's a 10 really good comments. There's about a thousand more. Uh, we'll do this every few weeks if we can. We, we appreciate your constant interaction on our videos keep doing it we love it keep doing it keep commenting keep that's on commenting saying. that's what i'm saying keep doing it keep, keep, commenting. Keep, keep, keep collecting keep commenting keep, keep commenting keep collecting all those things are important okay it's supposed to be funny it's a joke it's mocking you i didn't get it i know you're not mocking me <laughs> down below the screen i'm holding up one finger guess which one it is uh, hmm, Pinky, you're number one. <laughs> <laughs> Have an amazing week, Mike. You too, buddy.